Dawn Day to drink a time to inspire and motivate adults to drink again. Because as we go through life and take on our different roles and responsibilities, we tend to put our dreams on the back burner. And my goal here at Dawn Day to Dream is to help you pick those dreams back up and to pursue them again. Now, I, I want you to understand, I started Dawn Day to Dream because I wanted to relay my message and my heart and my feelings across to whomever would listen. It can be difficult getting your closest family and friends to understand the way that you believe and when you try to express it and share it. So this was like my back door way into <laughs> letting everybody know. Now I may have lost some viewers as a result of that because they don't agree. And that's fine. I am definitely a proponent of everyone having their own thoughts, their own process, their own mindset that works of how we see our environment. I don't care what everyone says it looks like or everyone says it is. We are in control of how we choose to perceive the environment. Hey dreamers, welcome back. <laughs> we are here at the Houston Zoo. We're not inside yet. The doors haven't opened, people are lining up. I decided to kind of walk over here to this little lake um, and show you what this is that's right here by the zoo but it looks like it's a lot of people out but i guess it'll, we'll figure that out when we go inside but the zoo is mandating that you wear your mask so um it's i feel like you know we'll be all right <laughs> this is where we are and this is uh downtown houston i don't know what they're doing over there see over there i have no idea they're doing some kind of exercise maybe they're dancers or something and this is the best place to come Outside, they're those big old ducks. Those <laughs> big ducks that they had when we was at the farm. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go ahead and get in line. I just wanted you guys to see this. So we're gonna go ahead and get in line so we can get in here. And like I told you, we're gonna go to the bodega taco shop when we're done. See how this this is why he needs to get out of the house. <laughs> So that he can do things like that. Um, I bought my tickets online. I'm not a member. Not sure where to go, but it says zoo interest arrows are this way. And it looks like the line is gone, so they must have let people in. So here we go. I hope you guys enjoy the zoo as much as we're going to. And remember, we're going to continue to talk about because this week we've been talking about pandemic life. So we're going to continue to talk about that and things that you can do with your family to de-stress. I'm here in Houston, Texas, so there are a lot of different things we can do outdoors. Um, but I'm not sure about where you are, but I would suggest Googling outdoor activities in your city and you can find out what it is that you can do so that you're not cooped up in the house all of the time. Okay, they scanned us in. Um, everything is touchless. So you have your electronic ticket that's in your, they email to you. You show that to a person that's behind plexiglass, they scan it, and then voila, you have been allowed into the zoo. When we did buy um, carousel tickets, so um, they scan those at the carousel and we get to ride that as many times as we like. Knowing us, it'll probably be once or twice and we'll be done. But I figured it didn't hurt. It was just like a dollar or two more. Um, so I, they're not giving out maps. You have to find the map on, your, on the zoo website. I never use the map anyway. I don't know where I'm going. Uh, I don't know what they're doing, but they're out. Yeah, they're out. Can we get some more animals out? Looking at tongue, boy. Looking at tongue. Oh, those are she's nursing her babies over there. See, she's nursing her babies over there. See the see them up under her. She's nursing. We should give her some privacy. <laughs> I know I wanted privacy when I was nursing Robert. Privacy was nice. Privacy was nice. I guess he must be the male. He just chilling. I'm eating. She can take care of them kids. <laughs> they is getting it over there. Mm -hmm. That's what mommies do. They take care of their babies. Nope, that's not because they're eating. 
They're drinking their mother's milk. That's weird. You drank my milk when I you were do? a baby. Yes. Well, I actually drank your milk. You sure did. Stop joking. <laughs> I'm not joking. Stop you did. joking. Ask your dad. I didn't drink For four milk. months, you did. And then it was over because mommy went back to work and everything dried up. It was weird. But, um, no, it's the healthiest thing that you can do for your baby is to give them nutrients from you. I believe. Yeah, your prob your wife will probably nurse your children. <laughs> so we're in the African forest, and as you can see, they have this thing called zoo lights. You see these big animal things here, these fake little things. Like there's another one. They light up at night, and people come to the zoo at night for zoo lights. So that is something else you could do with your family as an outside event. So now we're going into this is the arrival area. So oh, they got some animals out. We'll get to see. Look over here. Well, I'm right up at the glass. What is he? What is he, Robert? Do you see a sign? See him over there, guys? We got something up close and personal. But it's cool in here. I'm going to show you what it looks like. So this is called the arrival place. And this is where we can kind of come and see the um, animals on the inside. And then they have the names of each of them up here for you to see. So they have six. Every time I come, I usually get a good video, but I'm not sure about today. And then this is a red river hog that we have that is being so nice and friendly to us and letting us observe him today. What animal life is like and why we need to protect them. Ooh, we got a gorilla. You see him, we got one. He looks like a silverback. Check him out! I told you, I always get a gorilla. I think I'm a gorilla's on my side. I always get one. Stop, 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 stop. You make me wiggle. Oh, he turned his back on me. <laughs> Back up, Robert. Don't go too close to the people. You can stay right here. Can you see? Yeah. Go right there. Yeah. I can see him over there. This is the most interaction I've gotten at the zoo with gorillas. They gonna take him down. He's just a small gorilla. And that was just all along. <laughs> <laughs> They biting each Right. <laughs> what do you think? I think it's nice. See them back there? They are like, I've never seen this much activity before. They're so playful. They're having a good time. Usually it's just hot and they're just sitting there. Or they're like underground, an under, under thing where we can go and see them. There's like a cave where we can go and see them. And they're in there just sitting. I have some good footage of that too. This has been a good day. Yeah, it has been. Good day, good day. <laughs> so I wanted to continue to take the time to talk about pandemic life and 
where you want to go and what you need to do to get there. Um, we just have to just take a deep breath, let it out, because what we do know is we've been in this situation for about eight months and we're not sure how much longer it's going to be. So my suggestion is to figure out what you want to do to make your new normal as comfortable as possible for you. Because initially I wasn't leaving the house except to go to the grocery store and then I had to change that mindset because that wasn't gonna be suitable for me and my family forever, you know? So now we're in that underground area I was telling you about, that little play area. So there are a few gorillas back in there as well. This is where we usually see them. We don't usually see them up top. And this side is, a, I think, kind of new. It used to be over there only that I would see them on the other side. Because behind me, you see there's another opening back there. That's where some gorillas are as well. There's another one up there. I don't know what that is, but whatever it is, it tastes good because he's eating it too up there. And I think that's cabbage. That, those leaves are cabbage that we see everywhere. Well, guys, I wanted to highlight a little bit about mindset, belief, action. You know that is my motto. We have to have the proper mindset to do whatever it is we want to do. So everything that we do, it starts with a thought. It starts with, hey, I want to start vacationing more often. So you have that thought. Then you have to train your mindset into saying, yes, that's what I'm going to do. We're going to go on vacation. How are we going to do that? So you begin to ponder about how you can do that, how... Um, how you can make it happen then after you start thinking about how you make it happen you find all the possibilities that's when the belief kicks in because you're like wait a minute there are all these options for traveling all these different places at these different prices we can make this happen so you then decide okay 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 i believe now i believe we're going to go forth with this belief and once you really believe it in your heart and in your soul and your spirit and your mind you know what happens? You take action on it and you begin to put into place those things that you thought about, those options for that traveling that you wanted to do. So it's very important that we have the proper mindset, then we believe in what it is what we want and that we take action on those things as well. So we're back outside that area that I filmed inside as you can see a little bit of, um, or maybe I didn't, but there is another gorilla over here in the corner. I believe they're so active because it is cool right now. So it's like perfect time. And the summer here, when we typically come to the zoo, is blazing hot, 90 degrees, 100 degrees. And just like we're hot and sweaty, so are the animals. So I'm glad that I had the right idea to come to the zoo now because it's the perfect time of year to do so. so we're in the white rhinoceros habitat. Again, we're still in the um, Africa um, area of the zoo of the Houston Zoo so we're gonna go over here and see what he's doing oh he's moving now because he was just standing still see he's over there moving can you see him there he is oh, why? Mm -hmm. look like they, the yeah they do so if they got that horn they ram people with on top of their head he's going to hide away he's gonna stop he's still going well, it's not really there he is You're not looking at what you're looking at me for. You see me every day. So we're here at the um, giraffe habitat. Look like it's an ostrich in here and a zebra as well. So I'll turn around so that you can see. See everything back there? You like all of them. Yeah. They used to let us feed them, the giraffes, but I don't think they're going to let us do that today. That's how some things have changed. Maybe they'll get back to that. But I'm gonna turn this around so that you guys can see them. They're all stuffed over there eating everything, even the ostrich, the giraffe, and the um, zebra. It's interesting that the 
<laughs> you see, they all there, boy. I'm telling you, they love this grass. I don't know what they put in it, boy. It's like catnip. All the animals like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> they just tear it up, boy. I wish we were able to feed them. Maybe they are, but maybe it's too early to feed them. I don't know. But this is their habitat. That's so and it was like a very beloved. It was like a Philadelphia. And they had a killer on them, so it became a social media star. That long neck. Baby walked over here. If this wasn't deep, he could oh, get me. I'm talking huh? about the ostrich. Yeah. Is the restaurant close to the same? Yeah, it is. Oh, that's what we're eating. It has outside. Because it looks like a girl. Yeah, it is. You see him? He came over here. So we're gonna get on the carousel behind us. The person's behind plexiglass scanning the tickets. Um, so we're waiting for that. I won't be able to record while we're on there, but <laughs> it will be on there unless I sit in the seat that isn't moving. Yeah, I, I can't. Robert, I, how would I do that? Move it. Go, 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 go. Stop, stop, stop. The lines are down the ground right there for where you stop at. Um, yeah. So I just had to tell somebody about the lines, but it helped me. We are on the carousel. What I decided to do was to be one of the stationary seats. That way I can record us going around in a circle. <laughs> I'm just so fun. I just like to have fun. And I like to capture every memory that I can possibly capture. Here we go. Here we go. See how empty the castle is. It all the time. Shit, 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 Sonora. It all the time. <laughs> it's not so bad sitting down here. You get a breeze. You don't have to work by holding on to that animal up in the air. I kind of like the seat thing. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. The cheetah is right up here. Are you looking at something? It looks like a bone. So we have the cheetah. Again, Africa and a little bit dot of look like Asia down there. <laughs> yeah, so they're back there chowing down or licking around on that bone, I tell you. But we are going to get back into mindset belief action. What I want to do is give you another real world example in my life about mindset belief action and is about how I've been functioning do during the pandemic. Because remember, my, I had a mindset of fear initially and it's changed. So we're going to talk some about my mindset around the pandemic and how I function and what it is today and how I changed my mindset. There are two in here, guys. I thought there was only the one. They're going to socialize right now. Ooh, she pushed him away from that bone. Did you see that? She took him away from it. She went over and nudged him and he went over his business or she, whatever. Oh my Lord. So we found the lions. They saw a big hair. I'm there just chilling like this is my kingdom, my fiefdom. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and then we got the ladies. Let me show you the. They just laying down, chilling. They always do this. So do y'all walk around? Y'all exercise? Y'all hunt? Y'all do anything? They just kind of lay up there every single time. Oh, we didn't have the big dog up there, y'all. There he is. That must have been his son. I don't know. That Simba or something. But here we go. We got the big one, the big one. It's different now. Woo! Now that's a big head. See, that's the one that was up there and got booted out. <laughs> and the other ones are still laying down over there. Very interesting. Bye bye. We have elephants. We have elephants. Oh, it's okay. We have. Elephants, they're out now. They're out. We have elephants. They're eating probably some grass. 
Yep, they're eating. Why are you going? So, wanna go see if any of them are They're probably not hot enough yet. The only people. It's not back up, yeah. Um, I'd like to take a dip in the water right about now. So we're gonna walk over here to the other side to check out um, what's going over here with the other elephants. But I remember I wanted to talk to you about a real world example and I was telling you about my mindset. And you know, my initial mindset was I was staying in the house, I wasn't going anywhere because I was afraid. Then I realized that I started getting the itch of wanting to go out and how was I gonna do that? And how was I gonna stay in the house with my son when he came back from his dad for the summer and successfully do that because I think both of us were kind of tired of being in the house before he left to go to his dad. So I was like, this isn't gonna be something yeah, that is possible for like, him. So basically I had to figure out what I was gonna do. Now, mind you, I wasn't really sure, but I had had the thought, which was the beginning process of changing my mindset. I had the thought about needing to do something different, but how was I going to do it? And after having a thought, I began to ponder on the things that I could do outside here in Houston. So I had to figure out what we were going to do. And so I started to ponder through the different ideas and different concepts. And what I found was, okay, we go to the King of Boardwalk typically every October anyway. Let's try that, see how that goes. So if you notice, those, that's the thing we did the most. I think I've been there three or four times. Um, so that was actually nice. Then from there, I decided to um, explore other options. So I remember I always wanted to do the, the fall festival at Dewberry Farm, which I never would remember to do. By the time I remember, it'd be over. So we did that. That was another outside island that we could do. Then the zoo is an outside thing. And then I looked up some other things where we can do pedal boats in the lake downtown somewhere. I think it's kind of near this area. It costs, I think like $12 for 30 minutes. We're gonna do that eventually. It's like, the, I'm just, I just changed my mindset then I found things that I thought we could do. Then I went one step further. After I found all these outside things, I believed that this was possible and I could do this successfully. So as you can see, my belief has turned into action because every Saturday I try to have something planned where we get outside of the house and we do something. Outside of going to the grocery store and just plain shopping, there has to be other things that we can do for entertainment and that's what I've decided to do. But again, it started with a thought then it started, then it, that thought developed into a belief and then the belief developed into an action. And that's what I mean about mindset, belief, action and why that's so important. It's important in your daily life. It's important with the law of attraction. It's important with anything that you do. You gotta have the mindset to do it and you have to develop that mindset if you don't have it. And then you have to believe in what you're doing and then you take action on your belief. Wanna move? How massive. Look, 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 look how they put the feet on, put them down. It's just, just massive. Just look at that massive Ugh. I don't even know how they move all their weight around like that and here comes this other one so this might be a female because it's smaller and then that's the male over there because it's big I saw the pictures earlier they had the side the, 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 the next to each other he carrying his hay Just massive. Just massive. Did you hear that? There has to be some chimpanzees or something. Something going on. We need to go watch it. We're about to go inside. We hear all of this. <laughs> and I'm assuming it's those gorillas that are in there. So I'm very excited. So I was really worried about going outside at first with the coronavirus. Yeah. How did that make you feel? They made me feel good. I didn't like that, mommy. Yeah, you would felt trapped in the house? Yes. Yeah, I don't blame Cause, you. Because you kind of sound a little mean. <laughs> you just sound worried. But now I like I this year better. So we made it. We got in. We waited in line and we got in. Now I want to find out where in the world all this oh, 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 is coming from. What if it ain't even coming from in here? You know, that's going to be funny. Look at the, um. I'm assuming those are raccoons. <laughs> I'm assuming they're raccoons. I'm gonna show you guys. See behind us, they're raccoons, right? So you see how me being in a house really impacted my son. He did not enjoy it, and I know he didn't. He doesn't have any siblings, so I had to figure out a plan to get out of the house. Um, so far, the plan has been successful. It is working. So 
We're doing pretty good. But let me show you these. I don't know what they are. Here we go. These are ring tail more. Then we have some Madagascar big headed turtles in there and red head duck. I don't see all of these things. Maybe they're in some other habitats, but I thought they were skunks, but they're not skunks. <laughs> we so we're heading on around the corner. Maybe eventually we'll get to whoever is making this noise. And I'm gonna laugh if we can't even see it. <laughs> oh, they're telling us what primates eat. Most primates eat primary leaves, shoots, fruits, and insects. Some eat primarily fruit, while others eat only leaves. In the case of black howl, howler monkeys, that's what we hear. Black howler monkeys, I guess. They eat only leaves as they cannot digest other vegetation. Some primates will occasionally eat meat. So, they're mainly vegetarian. Who do? They all, these are very active. And they have a barrier between us and the monkeys, and I'm thinking because they don't want us giving the monkeys coronavirus. <laughs> That's what I'm guessing. Who they are running around in there? I don't know if y'all can catch all of this that's happening, but they are very lively. Very lively. So cute. So cute. I don't think they always had this exhibit because I don't remember seeing all this before. They playing. Okay, we're gonna move on. I'm standing back to see this is the best to be honest, guys. Look at that. They are just living their best life. Can I get a hammer's head? <laughs> So careful. Oh, there's one up there. They got quiet all of a sudden. The howling monkey stopped howling. Yeah, they, they, they sure are. Mm -hmm. They say siamangs are the loudest animals in the world. And I think that's that call we kept hearing over and over again. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys what it would say. You can pause it. The video and read if you like. Siamangs. So are you happy now that we do these outings on the weekends? Yes, ma'am. Orangutan habitat. I know, that, I know that's how we do this every weekend, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I try, I try to do. And I try um, to think of other activities to request that are outside. Yeah, like he requested the Houston Aquarium. We're going to do that next weekend. It's sort of like a miniature. Next Saturday? Yeah. No. I, yeah, maybe next Saturday. Um, it's like a miniature... And it's kind of like a theme uh, park. Over yeah, there. it's like a miniature Kima Boardwalk. So we have arrived here to the orangutan. They're back here hiding from us, not out in the open. So we're all kind of trying to get a view. So I'm just going to wait till the curd thins a little bit. Maybe I can get up close or I'll just zoom in. But it's two of them back there. It'd be nice to see. Oh, he's moving. Yeah. To the kitties, love the, we love the kiddos and the adults. We love the monkeys. <laughs> These are chimpanzees. Look, 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 look. He's putting his butt in our face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, we had to wait in line to get in the reptile house. As you can see, there's no one really on this side. Everybody's on the entry side because they're making sure they don't have too many people in here. But anyway, we're at the reptile house. We finally made it. We tried to get in here earlier, but it was we, we had come to the zoo too early to see. So we have about three different kind of anacondas in here, I think. See behind me, people. See all those? See those anacondas? It's like three of them, I believe, in there. Um, so I'm gonna turn around so that you can take a look. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, I'm gonna just do this. What'd you say? You don't wanna see them? And then there's the one that's lazy back there, just laying down. But we're gonna move forward. So, reptiles are not my thing, but Robert wanted to see them, so we came in here. We're at the end of the exhibit. They have more and more sticks on top of snakes. And I'm glad we came today. We're about to leave. We're gonna go head out to that place. I told you about Bodega Taco Shop and get some burritos and some quesadillas and enjoy ourselves sitting on their outside patio provided that it's not too crowded otherwise we'll just get carry out and take it home but we've had a good day here at the zoo i would advise if you have a zoo in your area they probably have a good deal of social distancing they have enforced people wearing their masks even outside um so if you like me and you wish people were masked all the time they do that here at the zoo so we do that here at the zoo, so that's what's really nice about it. And I just would say, come on and get out. It's a, you can spend half a day in here, taking your time, watching everything. You don't even have to buy their food. You can pack your own lunches and bring those. So that way, all you have to pay is the price of admission and nothing else. So I will catch you guys a little bit later. We're gonna head on out of here. So I hope this was inspirational to you, let you know that you can get out safely if you choose to. Um, Especially if you use it, live in a Houston metropolitan area, you could actually come to the zoo. My advice would be to come and be one of the first to come in like I did. That way when the crowd gets a little thicker, you're leaving. Um, so I just hope you, and then the little bit that I talked about, mindset, belief, and action, I hope that I got across my point well to you and um, you understand what I mean by it's all about mindset, it's all about our belief, and it's all about the action that we take. So. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Also, leave me any comment, ask any questions that you may have. Uh, secondly, share this to your social media platform to your friends and your family on social media. And last, remember to subscribe. My face will be up here in a circle. You can click on my face, select the gray bell, select all, and that way you'll be subscribed to my channel and you'll be notified to all the new content that I place up here to YouTube. Have a great day, dreamers.